Folks, welcome to Thursday Night Stock Charts Live. This is Bob Desmond, and tonight what we're going to be talking is the chart of Federal Express. Uh, shares are down in the after hours on not earnings, but guidance or the lack thereof. So uh, a pummeling year. We'll go over that chart. We'll take a look at it from a weekly view on where we think support will be on FedEx. We'll also then segue over and into the weekly charts of the major averages, bonds, bond yields, and some of the subsectors. So a lot to go over here. Thanks for being here. And don't forget, please smash that like button, please, if you would. Helps me out the YouTube algorithm. And what else? Opt in for any of our lists below, meaning free uh, technical analysis tutorials, my five top most favorite candlesticks. And you'll get alerted of, for, of as to when we go live each Sunday night and Thursday night, as well as our morning updates. So let's begin with FedEx. So FedEx reported really blowout numbers. If memory serves, they doubled their earnings. Some to that effect. But it was very, very good numbers. However, after surging, the knee-jerk reaction was, not surprisingly, to the upside. However, there's a lack of forward-looking guidance. So where do we think that FedEx is going from here? It doesn't look good. Let's go to the weekly chart. Let's, this is reflected. This is a weekly chart adjusted for the after hours price action. Hey, hey, Wilt. Good to see you, buddy. How's the snow there? Chin air. All right, so let's begin with a, uh, a monthly view of FedEx. Now, we have roughly, remember, it's a holiday uh, abbreviated month. Two, wow, you had a lot more than us. We had, a, we had about just about a foot. Wow. So FedEx, so far this month, has flashed a bearish key reversal due to the after hours Action now, we don't know how the shares are going to open up tomorrow. They're probably going to open up down, but you never know. Maybe they'll rally back. Who knows? Uh, there's a lot of cheap money sloshing around there, forcing stocks up higher. We're going to go to the weekly charts of equities in a moment, but as it stands right now, FedEx is not looking wonderful, and I think that we could retrace all the way back down here to two sixty six forty three. Let's overlay some automated trend lines. You know, no great shock here. Nowhere, this is the value of the automated trend lines. Let's take them off. Nowhere we topped out today. Right, right at resistance as noted by the automated trend lines. So this is the value of uh, using TrendSpider 35% discount code below using that link. So at current, we're, we've become quite bearish on FedEx, and I do think that we are going to proceed lower. So beware, I would not catch this falling knife. You're not seeing any type of a rebound in the after hour session. And in fact, what we're setting up for here, let's get rid of this. Is a bear flag setup. We'll track it throughout today's uh, show. If it breaks down to a new lower low on the session, 
we'll get alerted, and we're good to go. All right, let's go to the weekly price action. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, Long Island's a pretty tight area, no doubt. Uh, let's bring up the weekly charts. All right, so yesterday we had Fed Chair Powell meet along with his fellow band of banksters and no rate hike, no rate cut, but they will continue to buy about $120 billion worth of bonds every single month. That's akin to a rate cut every single month. So the Federal Reserve is, um, is very dovish. It is getting ready to become even more uber dovish when you have Janet Yellen, if, if in fact this election does go the way the mainstream media would have you believe, uh, Janet Yellen would be the new Fed chair, not Fed chair, uh, Treasury secretary, and you would have two dovish birds in one nest, and that means a whole lot of money printing. Now, something strange happened, and nobody's talking about it, but that's the reason why we get together every Thursday is to analyze chart charts and look for contradictions. So... Yesterday, the Fed chair was very, very dovish. Not a hint of hawkishness. Very dovish. And one might, would they would expect, taking a look at the TLT, the Treasury uh, Bond ETF, you would have expected to see bonds move up higher. But they didn't. They moved lower. Daily chart. Take a look at this price action today. They gapped the TLT up higher only to reverse it. It wasn't quite an outside reversal bar, but pretty bearish price action for the TLT. And you got to wonder, what the heck is going on here? Didn't Jay Powell come out yesterday and say we're going to be uber dovish? $120 billion more every single month, forever. It's never going to end because it can't end. It's a Ponzi scheme. If they stop buying, everything falls apart. So when you take a look at yields, you got you to gotta, you gotta try to take a look at the bond market as a whole, and you got to say, all right, the 20-year the, the bond is dropping. Let's take a look at the 10-year yield. What happens when the Federal Reserve, for all intents and purposes, cuts rates, yet bond yields continue to move up higher? What do you do? What does it mean? We'll go to what it means in a moment. But take a look at this price action weekly chart. We closed at the highs of the week. We didn't sell off. We went higher. We closed out the day yesterday higher. We closed out the day today even higher than yesterday. We'll, we'll check it out for you, Larry. Yeah, please. Uh, Larry, thank you for that. Smash the like button if you would, folks. Subscribe. Leave a comment below, please. Thank you, Larry, as always. So what gives here? Take a look at the, the, the Stokes breaking out, RSI, stair-stepping up higher. What's not to like here? Quarterly chart. So we're looking at the weekly chart and we're saying, wow, this looks pretty powerful. So let's go back to prior times when yields have uh, bottomed out and begun to rally higher. You know, the last case was back here. In July of 2016, we rallied from one and three quarters percent up to 2.262 percent by January of 17, only six months later. So that's a powerful move, and there's precedent for it in the past. What if that were to happen today? 
Do you think equities would continue to move up higher? I don't think so. They would go the exact opposite direction. Now when you take a look at the U.S. dollar, this has not been updated as of today. You can see here it says the 16th. It's one thing I don't like about StockCharts.com. Piss me off. All right, so at current, the U.S. dollar is actually lower than what is represented on this chart here. Uh, this week, we have hit lows. Actually, we're below 90. We're back down into this trading range last seen back in April of 2018, folks. So what does this all mean? The fact that we have bonds dropping, we have yields rallying. We have the U.S. dollar breaking down to multi-year lows. What does it mean? It looks as though what they're doing is not enough. And plus, you're beginning to see a crisis of confidence in the USA. Look at our 2020 I, I, I'm afraid to even say the word, but I'm going to say it, elections. OK, because you get you get deplatformed and everything else nowadays for speaking your mind. So the U.S. dollar is uh, breaking down. Yields are moving up higher. Not good. And then when you throw in there tips, Treasury inflation protected securities hit this week, new all time record highs. You only buy them when you believe there is inflation. So we have the U.S. dollar tanking. Inflation is rising. Even by the CPI's own numbers, inflation rose last week for the month prior. And that's not even a real number. The real number is more like 9%, 8% a year. Inflation, maybe even higher. I'm being conservative. So inflation rising. Bonds dropping. U.S. dollar dropping multi-year lows. Go figure. Not a good environment to begin 2021 at. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now, the VIX, so far this week, is flashing a bearish key reversal bar. No great shock. This is a seasonally favorable period of time for the S&P 500 Qs, whatever, equities as a whole. You might see some tax loss selling in travel and leisure or in stocks that have underperformed this year. But by and large, the equity markets will continue higher into the new year, absent a geopolitical event. So it looks as though the VIX will probably close at the lows of the week and will probably make lower lows next week. The Dow transports a down week, but we're off the lows of the week. Volume to the downside rolling in light. Now, what I do want to point out here is this. Remember that the Dow transports are our canary in the coal mine for equities. Usually, as go the transports, so goes the market. And when you take a look at MACD, which I don't use all that much, to be honest. But I do use it. I use the histograms. And I watch for a decline, declining momentum. This is more of a rear view mirror type of look at the markets. And you can see clearly... The transports, are they're losing momentum dramatically. So I worry about the transports moving into 2021. The Dow Jones Industrial Average weekly chart. We're at the highs of the week. Stokes are very extended. They haven't taken a breath, really, in a couple of weeks of trending up higher. Volume is poised to come in below average. Daily chart.
if I had to hazard a guess, I think that we're breaking out on a daily time frame on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I will caveat volume, folks. Volume is poised to drop off dramatically, especially especially as we move into next week, Christmas week, because it's going to be all computerized trade. All the humans on Wall Street, they're going to hop on their private jets, head over to Stad or uh, Aspen for the poorer ones, and they're just going to go skiing. So the, the market's going to be on autopilot. Don't expect much to happen. The S&P 500 weekly charge, charging up higher here. Clean breakout on RSI. They pulled back. They retested. Now they're breaking out to higher highs. We are at the highs of the week. Look at this volume. Horrible volume. This is only going to get worse. MACD histogram. Declining. Not as pronounced as the uh, Dow transports, but pronounced nonetheless. We are losing momentum. Daily chart. New higher highs today. We're going higher. But point out a must. Volume. Dropping off sequentially. But they can keep this going. Have no doubt. They can keep this going to new higher highs on ever declining up volume. Why? There's no overhead supply. There's nobody that bought two years ago that wants to sell and get made whole now. There's no overhead supply. Plus the computers, they're going to keep buying the, buying the market in very light volume, but keeping it in check. No big sell orders, except for tax law selling. IWM weekly chart extremely extended here. We're up nearly 3.5% on the week. Volume has been declining. MACD histogram still looks pretty good here, I have to say. Daily chart. We're going higher. How was volume today? Volume dropped off, but it wasn't horrible. The banks. All right, so as long as the banks, excuse me, as long as the markets continue to move up higher and yields continue to move up higher, so shall the banks. And in fact, when you take a look at the banks on a daily time frame today, they broke out. So we had a breakout on a daily time frame on the banks. These are to be bought when... The first trading day of the new year comes around, then we'll reevaluate how we want to be positioned with this market. Do we want to be net short or uh, do we want to be net long? Not quite sure yet, but in all probability, if yields continue up higher along with equities and the Federal Reserve is pushing on a string, they're not getting, getting the bang for their buck anymore, I, I don't know what's going to keep equities moving up higher. Because yields are moving up higher. So at some point in time, traders are going to start to say, wait a minute. The Federal Reserve is as accommodative as they could possibly be. Yet yields are creeping up higher. The dollar is moving lower. Inflation's moving up. Input costs are moving up. That's going to kill earnings. Why are stocks going to continue to move up higher if yields continue to move up higher? Hey, Denny. Yep, back home, about 20, just shy of 2,600-mile ride. It was a good time. So I went to a few towns that I'm looking for um, properties in, uh, either Charleston, west coast of Florida, even, uh, not that I'm really looking to buy there, I just went to the, I did a tour of uh, Civil War territory, and I was in uh, that Valley Forge area, just outside of uh, Philadelphia, King of Prussia, that area. And it's booming, booming. I was in shock. A lot of construction, a lot of stuff going on there. So 
you know, you pull back into New York, and I'm, I'm saying to myself, Jesus, what am I doing here? So I'm definitely going to be looking for another property outside of New York. Uh, when I'm going to pull the trigger, not quite sure yet. So more to come on that. So the bank's looking very good here. Thank you for asking, Denny, or commenting. Uh, the bank's looking good here. Stokes are hooking up higher. Banks look good. Moving forward. Q's, weekly chart, new all-time highs. Up 3% on the week. Horrible volume. <laughs> and it's only going to get worse. Daily chart. Coastal New Hampshire is awesome. Okay. I'm not... You're going to make me bring up a map in a minute. All right, I'll check out the map in uh, in a while. I don't think there's uh, personal uh, state income tax there, right? Uh, daily chart of the queues. Filled candlestick. But new all-time highs. Volume is just horrible. Technology, new all-time highs going up higher. Uh, kind of surprised with yields moving up higher. The technology is holding up so well, but they are. Tis the season to own stocks. Daily chart, let's check out the volume. Volume rose, but still below average. Land around Portsmouth is fairly cheap. Portsmouth. Cool, I'll check it out. They leave you alone. That's all I. That's all I ask for. I'm very, very simple. Semis, weekly chart, an inside week. No new high, no new low. Rather surprising. Horrible price action last week. Volume terrible this week. Let's check out a monthly chart here. Look at this volume on a monthly time frame. Horrendous. Dropping off sequentially. Stokes still look good. MACD still looks good. We're probably moving up higher. Unless we get a bearish reversal month, we're probably moving up higher. Biotechs smash right into resistance. They were rejected. Well, I can't believe this was at 86 only a few days ago. Now it's at 115. Big topping tail. Expect a pullback here. Energy, rough week. So this is one of those sectors where you may get some tax loss selling into the end of the year. That might be what we're seeing right now, especially given the fact that oil is moving up higher, yet energy is taking it on the chin. Here's oil. It wants to go up higher. Definitely a powerful chart. This is the USO, so volume is dropping off a bit. We can measure it. Good looking chart. It's probably going up higher. Gold. Okay. So. Uh. I, I don't know how, as we proceed into 2021, how people are not going to take advantage of this pullback on gold. We hit all-time highs in 2021. I think that we're making new all-time record highs probably in Q1 of 2021. This time, though... 
I think it sticks. The reason why it didn't stick this past quarter is that we became technically overbought, trading above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, and we sold off. Add to the fact that we had a bout of deflation. But keep in mind something, that jobless claims today were horrible, horrible. And you would expect that to be deflationary. Now, what did gold do? It was up over 30 bucks. It didn't care. I think even the tips closed down today. Oh, they eked out a gain. Okay, they were higher. They pulled back. So they gave up a lot of gains, but they did eke out a gain. But you would, I, I, I wouldn't have been surprised to see the tips close lower on the day because when you hear poor jobs data, that is technically deflationary because people are just paying down debt. They're just trying to get by. They're not buying a lot of stuff. There'll be a lot of pent-up demand. All right, back to gold. Gold, that's GDXJ. So quarterly chart, we're still down on the quarter. Don't be surprised that we close positive. Monthly chart. An inside bar, no new high, no new low versus the prior bar. Volume, a bit meh, I have to admit. Daily chart, monster day. We hit 1900, a lot of resistance up here. I think that right now what you're seeing is probably the last great opportunity to get in on gold at a reasonable price. I mean, you look and see what's going on with Bitcoin right now. It is just flying. And as the money printing continues, and the Federal Reserve comes to realize, you know what, we're not doing enough. We have to print more. You're going to see gold just rip. You're going to see the dollar decline. Gold is priced in U.S. dollars. And gold is just going to go parabolic. So if you're not long of it, you may want to consult your financial advisor because we are buying up the GDXJ. We bought the dip, what was it, last week? And you could see... This week, up huge, up over nearly 8 9% on the week. And we have broken out, assuming that we close where we're at or higher on the week. As a matter of fact, we can give up a point or two. We would still have broken out above not one resistance level. I call this dotted blue line here my tripwire. We are now closed above the $55 per share mark at $55.58. So a healthy week. Do I think we go shooting straight up from here? Not necessarily. But this is a very powerful setup. Watch for a breakout above, let's call it 56.50 per share. We're just shy of it. Volume today was very good. We've also, besides the um, besides the gold miners, we've now been buying the silver miners using the SILV. They surged today. Let's bring that chart up. That's the pure, pure. Pure fun. That's what it is. Here's a weekly chart. Look at this RSI, higher lows, a W formation off the rising upper band, excuse me, rising lower band of support. Stokes, powerful, beautiful breakout on the week. How do you not love this? Now, do you go all in right here, right now? No, do not do that. We may get a pullback and a retest of the support level. If we get that, I'll be sending out a trade alert to members, letting them know we're adding more aggressively here at this price point. So we're going to be looking to build on these positions. I love the gold miners. I love the silver miners. We're trading from time to time covered calls on the silver miners 
excuse me, not, I haven't done the silver miners, on the gold miners, I may be selling puts on the SILJ 50, 15 strike going out into next week, assuming they have weekly options. And when I say sell the put, that's actually a bullish trade. I'm not looking to short the shares by buying a put. I'm looking to have the shares put to me should the shares close at or below $15 per share Friday next week. So that's one trade. At worst case, they get put to me and I'm down a couple of points, uh, down some uh, money on the uh, net asset value of the shares. Worst case, I collect a premium. And that's it. I don't have the shares put to me. But I want to buy the shares. I want to buy more. So we're going to be looking. So members, more to come here. Let's go to a daily chart. Beautiful day today. Trading above, closed above the third standard deviation. Bollinger Band, folks, don't go chasing these shares right now. You need it to already be in them. So expect a pullback. You're going to get it. So I'm liking the 15 area, or even if we get down into a 14 handle again, I don't think we're going to spend much time there, not with inflation moving up higher, the dollar moving lower. It's not going to happen. So any pullback, we'll be buying. This is gold money. We added to this position today on a breakout. So gold money looking good. I'm not going to go over all our positions here. I do want to talk about silver. We are along of the AGQ, which is a pro shares ultra silver ETF. Let's pull back first and take a look at a monthly chart. Folks, I mean, this is what multi-time frame analysis is all about. Stepping back, get away from the noise of a intraday chart or a daily chart and start paying attention to the macro trend and what it's telling you. We are breaking out on a monthly time frame. Granted, the month is not over. A lot can happen. We could pull back. We could give up all these games for all I know. But as it stands, this snapshot in time right now, the path of least resistance is resuming to the upside for gold and silver, whereas the U.S. dollar is broken down to lows not seen since 2018. What else do we have? Uranium. Uh, we're probably going to book profits on uranium members. Very extended here on a weekly time frame. We'll look to get back in on a pullback. It'll come. That's Boeing pulling back. All right, let's do some chart requests. I think Trader Will had one or Trader Isaac had one. INAQ. Oh boy, what is this? Is this right? There's not much data to work here with. I mean, it looks I, I, it's it's hard for me to do any type of analysis on this. There's just simply not enough data. All I could do is just take my crayon out and go, you know, and if it breaks out above, uh, what is this, 13? 1364, looks like it's a buy. The however is, is if it fails and it breaks down below 1277, it looks like a sell. Simple as that. Right now, I have zero idea which direction it's going to take. It looks okay. It looks like it's it's setting up for a breakout, but each time it's tried to, it's been rejected. Let's take a quick peek at a four-hour chart. It's trending up higher. It's in a triangle formation. 
if it does break out, the automated trend lines are giving us an idea of as to where support or, res- excuse me, where resistance would be. And that's in around 1393. But this is a four hour chart. That upper band of resistance is subject to change very quickly on a daily basis, in fact. So I wish I could offer more on this. I just don't, I don't have a lot of data to work with. Sorry about that. Uh, let me go into the members area. DraftKings. Weekly chart. Oofa. All right, so, yeah, DraftKings is going up higher, and I'll tell you why. When you take a look at the consumer discretionary sector, of which DraftKings is certainly a part of, this is a weekly chart. That's the wrong... Those are staples. Where are my discretionaries? Here we go. Discretionary. Let's get this off. Whatever overlay this is. Okay. Work with me here. Work with me. There we go. Okay, so weekly time frame. Consumer discretionaries are looking very, very bullish. They're at the highs of the week. Uh, You heard that FedEx had uh, good numbers. Forget about the forward-looking guidance right now. Maybe the chart will reflect forward-looking guidance on consumer discretionaries tomorrow. But as it stands right now, this snapshot in time, uh, it looks as though consumer discretionaries are doing well, they're having a good quarter or had a good quarter, and they're breaking out. Volume could be better. Now, DraftKings is in that space. So you're seeing Penn Gaming, Rip. Um, Let's see the other one. Churchill Downs, Ripping. DraftKings going up higher. This is the weekly chart. We have broken out here. Above 58.83. I'll tell you, if we get a pullback next week, and we test the support level again, which it probably will do. I'd be a buyer. Our alert is set. Let's go to a daily chart. Broke out today. Today was the breakout. This is a buy. This is a buy. I would watch to see how the market reacts tomorrow morning. Not that DraftKings is affected by FedEx numbers, but FedEx is like a sentiment gauge, you know. If FedEx is not going to uh, announce forward-looking guidance, we'll see how the discretionary names and how the uh, the uh, the consumer-sensitive names, how they behave tomorrow. So I wouldn't be a buyer tomorrow morning. I would see if, if DraftKings is able to shake off Uh, Any sell-off tomorrow morning, then I'd be a buyer on a new breakout to a new high. 
uh, meaning a new daily high sequentially. So DraftKings looking very good here moving forward. Boeing. Cena, how you doing, brother? Cena, do, do you have access to um, to the members uh, area where you can input these? Because I want to make sure that I don't miss you. That's why you should use the ticket cloud so that just go in here. Just go in here and enter BA and that way I can keep track track of them as well. Uh, that's BA. What was the other one he had? Hey Tommy. I thought you had two. Okay. Okay, I just don't want to miss you. I always go to members first. Manoj. We'll take a look at that for you, Manoj. Franklin, hello, sir. Ah, good for you. <laughs> Catching my name, man. Thank you, Franklin. Where are you skiing? Awesome. Good for you, man. Okay, let's go to... Um, Larry, Amazon is undervalued. We'll take a look at it for you. Beaver Creek, Colorado. Not familiar with it, but I'm sure it's beautiful. It's a beautiful state. All right, let's get to this. Let's do it. All right, let's go in order. Let me write these down so I don't forget. Costco, Tesla, everyone's favorite short who gets their faces ripped off by it. Oh, that's what it is. It's a SPAC, INAQ. That makes sense. Okay. Oh, I didn't bring up the uh, <laughs> Cena. I typed your name in here as a symbol. I'm losing it. Not enough sleep. Too much driving. Uh, INAQ, I can only use the, uh, daily and intraday charts for, yeah, nice day today. Definitely nice buying into the close. For those not familiar with range op charting, this is a mixture of candlestick charting and uh, volume weighted moving average. So how you interpret these candlesticks is that the left side of the candlestick is the morning price action. The left side, which is the most important to me, because when I buy, it's very late in the afternoon. So I always like to see stocks trade with what I call big, fat, pregnant bellies. And that's exactly what this stock did today. So, very good price action here. Thank you for reminding me about the range drop charting on INAQ. And even on a four-hour time frame, it's looking good. So, based upon the range drop charts, I have more data to work with, given the fact there's not much data overall in terms of time. So, the chart looks, there's a bias to the upside using the range drop charts. So... Thank you for reminding me about the raindrop charts. Yeah, Tommy, D, DKNG, uh, pens come a long way, but DKNG looks like it, it could still move up a lot higher. Big Bear, how you doing, brother? Trill, we'll go over it. And if I can ask you folks just joining in, smash that like button. Please follow the channel. Let's spread the word. Technical analysis, the way to go. Boeing. DKNG we did. 
CA for Minoj. Now I'm jealous of you, Franklin. I would love to be skiing right now. AN, auto nation. Okay. No worries, Manoj. Cool. Oh, Redfin. Yeah, we'll check that out. Okay, let's do this. Tesla. The short killer. Four hour chart looks monster. Looks like it wants to break out. But let's remain disciplined. Let's pull back. Do our high level view. Weekly chart. 651.48 is resistance. We're just shy of it. Daily chart. We broke out today. I think that we're moving up higher on Tesla. And in fact, because given the time of year that it is, seasonally favorable, I just want to buy stocks. We have a hedge to the short side for complete disclosure. But I do want to buy stocks into the new year. Then I want to go, I want to step back from the market for a bit, reevaluate, watch and see if yields continue to move up higher. Then I may lean into the short side. We're good. Set it and forget it. Our alert's set. Bullish on Tesla. I think it's going up higher. Trill. Trillion. Good consolidation here, daily chart. Let's, we'll come back to this. All right, so we've had our pullback. You can see we had an alert. That fired off. We set an alert to watch for a breakthrough. That has happened. Let's get rid of this. Let's take the automated trend lines off. I like to use the automated trend lines after I do my trend lines. That way, I'm not. It doesn't bias my opinion. Yeah, this is good. This is shaping up here. So what we did is this week we retested the lows of the week of October the 26th, which is good. And in fact, we retested the highs of the week of August the 31st. And we rebounded to close above support. One trading day left to go. A lot can happen here. But this snapshot in time looking very favorable. Daily chart. Okay. So... I think this could be bought. Small position, stop loss right below the lows of the week. Very little 
risk, lots of reward. All right, we're set here. I think you, I think you could scratch the itch here. Nibble on some. Uh, we're breaking out. Let's throw over the throw up the automated trend lines. Beautiful, beautiful breakout here. So this is why I use the automated trend lines after the fact. It's they're validating my analysis, which is good to see. I call. The automated trend lines might spell check for technical analysis. So these are good for new traders and experienced traders. A lot of upside potential here on Trillion. I mean, using the weekly overlay of resistance on a daily time frame, uh, a lot of upside potential here. So what I'd be looking for with this trade right here, right now, what's my short interest? If there are a lot of shorts that are there to be squeezed, I would probably go pretty hot and heavy with the shares. I'd also want to know where my stokes were. All right, so they're flattening out now, beginning to hook up. That's what you want to see. Beware that volume dropped off today. And the reason why that's significant, because we broke out today. All right, so just be forewarned, you saw volume drop off. So that reinforces what I would want to see is a pullback and a retest and a defense of what was resistance back here. I want to see it act as support yet again. So trillion looking promising. I think it could be nibbled on. And you add on strength. And a lot of upside potential here for the shares. Trader Isaac added to S&P Monday. So last five minutes of the day tomorrow. We'll see if there is enough sellers to match buyers. If not, might squeeze into the close. And... Tesla. Bonnie Bean, haven't seen you in a while. Hello, Bob. Can you take a look at Doc on the if it comes up on my uh on my trading software? I sure will. It should. Let's answer that question now because it's gonna haunt me. This is not a, a Toronto stock traded stock. That's not, oh, here it is. Is this it? Doc.v, uh, Cloud MD, Bonnie, can you confirm that for me? Boeing. All right, so Boeing, despite the fact that it has Rallied well off the lows. We made a, a, a lot of money on this one. Okay, cool. Thanks, Bonnie. We'll go over it. We made a lot of money on this one this year, but we did sell. And unfortunately, I think that Boeing is one of those names that could suffer from tax loss selling. So if, in fact, it is going to be a Biden administration, I think that 2021 will be a good year for Boeing. I'd be a buyer of Boeing on a pullback. The question is, where to buy? All right, so here I have my volume-weighted moving average, which is moving up rapidly in yellow. You're welcome, Bonnie. We also have a 20-period moving average in green. 
So I like ideally a two, an overshoot to two hundred bucks a share would be ideal. But 208.35 looking very attractive. And I want to point out something. That absent. Forget about absent. We've broken down. We've, we've broken trend here. So 209.35 is not out of the question. We closed at 220. And ideally, if we ever get a, an opportunity to buy at 200 again, uh, I'd be buying it hand over fist. Now, if it were a, or if it will be a Trump administration, then I would sit back. I would wait because uh, relations aren't going to get any better in 2021. So with a Biden administration, more bullish on Boeing than I am with the Trump administration for the obvious reasons. Now, overlaying, yeah, so... The week thus far, using the automated trend lines, we have broken support. Now, tomorrow's one more trading day. We could rally back and recapture for all I know. We'll go to the daily chart in a moment. But as it stands right now, looking very weak. Daily chart. Very weak. It's broken below its volume weighted moving average in yellow. Putting into sight that 208 mark on Boeing. That's where I'd be looking to begin nibbling down to 200 bucks a share. CA, new entry. Oh, let me check out one other thing. On, uh, I always look at my Stokes. Always. Without fail. Avoid. Avoid like the plague. Tomorrow, both lines on Stokes will be down below 50. As I always like to say when that happens, when you get this, both lines trading down below 50, rallies tend to fade. So beware. There's a lot more downside here. I would avoid. But I'd be a buyer at my price points. CA. Is that right? Let me check that. Maybe I jotted down the wrong symbol. This is why it helps to have that ticker cloud filled out because it helps me keep track. Hmm. I think it was Minoj that asked for this one. Yes, CA. So, Minoj, this is not coming up. Let's try. Can you just validate that, that uh, symbol for me, Minoj? Yeah, it's not coming up for me. We'll come back to it if you uh, perhaps had an inputting error, and we'll take a look at it for you. AN ordination. Daily chart looks spicy. Weekly chart looks really good. We have a breakout, one trading day left to go, but ordination looking rock solid. No monthly resistance to worry about. Let's take that off. Let's go to a daily chart. Now I'm going to overlay weekly resistance on top of a daily chart. Nice breakout.
I think it's going up higher. I think auto nations are high. Very nice. Redfin. Now this was for uh, oh. This was for Franklin. Franklin, you wanted to know if there is a ceiling on Redfin. To determine that, the first thing I need to do is bring up a quarterly chart, get all the data available to us. Oh, my God. This thing's ridiculous. I just want to make sure there's no overhead supply above, and there is not. Monster volume. This is not mom and pop buying a hundred shares. This is this is institutional accumulation. So despite the fact it's very overbought, I think it's still going up higher. Man, this thing's overbought. The only thing that we could do here, let's see if Trend Spider will do it for us, is extrapolate out from prior peaks. Or perhaps, perhaps use... Mm, let's go to, uh, I know there's a way to do it on Trend Spider. I'm going to cheat here. <laughs> um, we are on borrowed time here, folks. We're, I mean, this should have been the upper band of resistance. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm extrapolating out prior highs, just playing connected dots. It's all very simple. Uh, we, we, we are on very borrowed time with uh, Redfin. So what I would do here, while I still think it could move up higher, and I would not short it quite yet. I think we've already hit that ceiling and shot through it. I think there needs to be a retracement back down to the support level. Maybe we hold it, maybe we don't. Yeah, same deal here. Um, at any minute, watch the volume. If volume begins to drop down dramatically, then I think it's time to short into the stock. We have no overhead supply here. Uh, even when you extrapolate out prior peaks, we're so well beyond uh, extrapolating out prior peaks to identify where there might be resistance. I can't put it into words. So I would be very careful with here, this one, where I long, I'd be using a trailing stop loss order and have the market take me out. But short term, despite the fact that we are very overbought, RSI 88, spot 74, uh, you did see a bit of topping action today. But look at this volume. Who, who am I to fight these guys, right? They'll, they'll, they'll murder me. So we may be contrarians, but we're not fools. Yeah, so you did see some selling into the close on volume, but still, I wouldn't short this stock. I think they're going to bounce it back tomorrow. Do we have a 15-minute top yet? 
We do. We do. I want to answer your question, uh, Franklin. I can't give you a, an educated answer uh, because we're, we're just in no man's land right now. Uh, we've shot through what would have been my upper band of resistance. So I would, I would take note that the 15-minute chart is flashing a lower high. That means nothing till, of course, we break down to new lower lows below 74.95. Then perhaps the bears will take control. Right now, though, path of least resistance remains to the upside. So, yeah, I got you, Frank. And so I, 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 what, what I would do in a situation like this is just simply use a trailing stop loss order. And it need not be your entire position, just a portion of your position and just scale out. Let the market take you out. You know how these things usually end. You get that big wick and you wish that you would have had the trailing stop loss order in that you could have captured that, uh, that upside, which had been given up to close lower on the day, like a bearish key reversal bar. For those not familiar that what we're talking about, uh, what I'm talking about is this, one of these numbers, where we gap up higher and only to close off the highs of the day using a trailing stop loss order, you could get stopped out within this wick. And that could have happened today for, for, for that matter. So you're very close to a top here. My only concern is volume right now. The volume is still very strong, and I don't want to fight these guys. We're going to leave off with Doc V, Toronto Exchange Stock. First thing that jumps out at me at this chart is something that I have a real peeve about. And that is this. I hate Stokes trading down below 50. I mean, hate is an understatement. And I don't hate any, anybody, but I hate Stokes. Unless I'm short, I love them. Uh, I hate Stokes trading down below 50 because rallies tend to fade, just like you saw last week. The however is... We're very close to a breakout. We're not there yet. We're in a very tight trading range. We're at the upper band of that trading range. Stokes being any measure, I believe that we will probably fail. I could be wrong. I would wait, though, for the breakout above this resistance level. I would not be a buyer right here, right now. Daily chart. The daily chart is showing signs of improvement. It's showing that it should break out. The however is, is the weekly chart, right? We use multi-time frame analysis. So while the daily chart looks good, what haunts me is the weekly chart. Because if the weekly chart is weak, any rally on a daily chart is susceptible to failure. So I would be careful here. I'll acknowledge the fact that I think that the price action looks pretty good. I'll acknowledge the fact that we are breaking out on daily stokes. We're hooking up and we are healing here. Volume is not good. I think we can break out. I question whether or not we're going to hold that breakout for any length of time until such time as the weekly chart begins to firm up. So if we do break out and close above, let's call it 230 per share, I would nibble. I would stay small, remembering the weekly chart. If after a couple of weeks, Weeks, the weekly chart begins to mend. Stokes are hooking back up. You have momentum on your side. Build on strength. That's my call. You're welcome, Franklin.
I will leave off with BIGC. Big Commerce. I've heard of this company before. Daily Chart looks good. You're welcome, Bonnie. You're welcome, Mr. G. Looks good. What the heck just happened? All right, so I think this is firming up very nicely. The lows have probably been put in here. Stokes are hooking up. Spinning top formation yesterday. That's an indecision bar. Follow through today on the candlestick being a bullish key reversal. Volume light. I think it goes up higher. I like it. Daily chart we broke out today. It looks good. I think it goes up. <laughs> Will, you just took the words out of my mouth. Please smash that like button, folks. Thanks for being here. As always, I really appreciate you spending your Thursday nights and Sunday nights with me. Uh, smash the like button, please, if you would. Helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And subscribe. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a profitable trading day tomorrow. And for those checking out, going away, like Franklin with ski chips over uh, in Colorado, which I'm jealous about. I'll be haunted by that. Uh, have a great holiday, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Be well.